subscribe to our channel for latest video series on gain UGC net and more. Also press the bell icon so that you never miss an update on any latest video. For more information you can visit our website or call on the numbers below. Okay, so now we look at convolution of two pulses. Convolution of pulses. Fine. What is a pulse? A pulse consists of unit step functions, a raising, rising unit step and a falling unit step. A pulse of finite duration we are talking about, right? So what happens when we are convolving two pulses? If the pulses have same width, same duration, then on convolution of pulses of same duration, you are going to obtain a triangular pulse, okay? We have seen different kinds of pulses uh, previously, okay? If you are convolving two pulses of different widths, you are going to obtain a trapezoidal pulse. Fine, what am I saying is, suppose I have two pulses, this is xt, I am convolving this with another function uh, ft, this add value 10, right? See here, duration of both the pulses is same, both are two units uh, duration, okay, two units long. Now what happens when I am going to con perform convolution of these two pulses, I am going to obtain a triangular pulse, triangular pulse, where slope of this rising arm is going to be the product of their amplitudes, product of amplitudes was 50, right, and also Lower limit for this triangular pulse is going to be sum of lower limits of these pulses which is 0 and upper limit is going to be sum of upper limits of these two pulses which is 4. Now if this is a, a line of slope 50, it's going to be 2, right? So this final value, I can calculate the final value. Final value for this pulse is going to be 100, 100, okay? And similarly, this is going to be a slope of minus 50, right? Also, see area of this pulse, area of this pulse is 10, area of this pulse is going to be 20, product of these two areas is 200, also area of this triangular pulse is going to be 200, which means area of product of area of individual pulses is going to give you the area of the final or resulting in triangular pulse. So this is what happens. See, uh, how did we obtain this? How do we get this? If you just try to uh, express this xt as sum of shifted unit step functions, what can I write it? 5ut minus 5ut minus 2 and ft is going to be 10ut minus 10u t minus 2. Now if I just try to convolute them, you know that convolution of two unit steps is going to give you a RAM signal. So yt which is equal to xt convolution ft, what are you going to obtain? I am performing the convolution one by one. So convolution of these two is going to give me 50rt minus 50rt minus 2, right? Uh, minus 50 RT minus 2 and plus 50 RT minus 4, okay. Uh, because you know that shift, uh, shift in any of the signal is going to give a uh, corresponding shift in the final product. That is what I have used. Now if I just uh, simplify it, I can write as 50 RT minus 100 T minus 2 plus 50 RT minus 4 which means a line of slope 50 starting from t is equal to 0, a line of slope 50 starting from t is equal to 0 up till t is equal to 2, up till t is equal to 2. At t is equal to 2, slope changes by minus 100 which means resulting slope is going to be minus 50 continuing till t is equal to 4 and at t is equal to 4, slope change of plus 50 which makes final slope as 0, right? So this is how we are representing this, okay? This is the representation of this function. Now, if these pulses were of equal width, we obtained a pulse, a triangular pulse, where slope of, okay, you can just note these points maybe, slope of the rising arm is equal to product of individual amplitudes on convolution of two pulses of equal width, convolution of two pulses of equal width, what is going to happen? What are we going to obtain? we obtain a 
ट्रायंगुलर पल्स ट्रायंगुलर पल्स हुज लोअर लिमिट इज गोइंग टू बी इक्वल टू एडिशन ऑफ लोअर लिमिट्स ऑफ एडिशन ऑफ लोअर लिमिट्स ऑफ इंडिविजुअल पल्सेस एडिशन ऑफ लोअर लिमिट्स ऑफ इंडिविजुअल पल्सेस सिमिलरली अपर लिमिट इज गोइंग टू बी एडिशन ऑफ अपर लिमिट ऑफ इंडिविजुअल पल्सेस ओके देयर फॉर विथ ऑफ द ट्रायंगुलर पल्स इज गोइंग टू बी सम ऑफ विथ्स ऑफ दीज इंडिविजुअल पल्सेस नाउ नेक्स्ट स्लोप ऑफ राइजिंग आर्म स्लोप ऑफ राइजिंग आर्म इज गोइंग टू बी इक्वल टू इक्वल टू प्रोडक्ट ऑफ इंडिविजुअल एम्पलीट्यूड प्रोडक्ट ऑफ इंडिविजुअल एम्पलीट्यूड ऑफ पल्सेज फाइन दिस स्लोप स्लोप ऑफ द राइजिंग आर्म एंड एरिया ऑफ रिजल्टिंग पल्स एरिया ऑफ दिस रिजल्टिंग ट्रेंगुलर पल्स This is going to be equal to product of individual areas. Product of okay. If you just product the areas of these pulses, you are going to obtain area of this resulting pulse. Fine. So uh, this can come handy if you just shift these pulses. What happens to this corresponding shift occurs in this one. Okay. So if you are given just two uh, simple pulses. you can directly sketch the convolution right now if this if these pulses are not of equal widths if they are of unequal widths we are going to obtain a trapezoidal pulse okay let us look at that now so now suppose we have two pulses of unequal widths okay since uh, these this pulse occurs from t is equal to 0 to 2 and this occurs from 0 to 3 so their width is not same now when i am going to perform convolution of these two pulses i am not going to obtain a triangular pulse some some changes going to occur i am going to obtain a trapezoidal pulse okay see when if these were of equal width i obtained a triangular pulse whose width was equal to sum of these two right now i am going to obtain a trapezoidal pulse same rules are going to apply here okay lower limit for this trapezoidal pulse is going to be zero upper limit is going to be addition of these two which is 5 now this is also going to have a rising arm see now this uh, so you have seen a trapezoid okay this is how a trapezoid looks like it has a it has a rising arm a falling arm and a line of slope zero okay a straight line so the this rising arm is going to have slope which is equal to product of individual amplitudes here it is going to have a slope of 50 similarly this falling arm is going to have a slope of minus 50 and duration of this rising and falling is going to be same okay since they have same slope lines okay these lines have same slope so duration for these uh, duration uh, these uh, rise and fall are going to be same and equal to width of smaller pulse see smaller pulse here is this one width 2 so these are going to be of width 2 that is from 0 to 2 you are going to have a rising arm then for one unit you are going to have a straight line and then again for two units since width of smaller pulse is 2 you are going to have a falling arm slope of this line is going to be 50 slope of this line is going to be minus 50 if slope of this line is 50 its final value is going to be 100 right 100 now if i just try to calculate the area again i am calculating areas so area of this pulse is going to be 10 units area of this pulse is going to be now 30 units and how do you calculate area of trapezoid half into half into height height means this this value which is 100 here into sum of parallel sides now this is having a magnitude 1 plus this one is having magnitude 5 so if you just calculate it it's going to be half 200 into 6 which makes it 300 units also if you just multiply both of these you are going to get 300 so same rules apply here the area of the convoluted pulse is going to be the product of area of the two individual pulses lower limit is going to be sum of lower limits upper limit is going to be sum of upper limits this one difference that's going to occur is that the uh, duration of rise and duration of fall is going to be equal to the lower uh, pulse okay lower width pulse fine so if you are convoluting two unequal width pulses you're going to obtain a trapezoidal pulse and this is how you can sketch it fine now one thing that you can notice 
this a uh, one more thing convolution of convolution of two causal signals two causal signals is always going to be causal always going to be a causal signal okay 